on today's episode, we'll be swapping out a dash. Also gonna be charging AC on this thing. It's still available. this dash here I'm looking at all of the mounts and stuff really doesn't look like it's gonna be too bad I gotta see what all plugs in okay got speakers and oh they just cut that off there's a harness back here for the speaker probably gonna be faster as you can see they just they just cut them off um, speaker unplugs right there at the speaker and then uh, this is like a sun sensor there's one on that side too so we'll have to get in and unplug those so they can plug into the the harness on the car but still doesn't look too horrible to do there is duct work which is bolted in which we're gonna leave there I don't know how bad this is gonna be honestly but as you can see they take the grill guards off here um, Apparently there's a bolt right here, which is probably under the A-pillar covers. So, we've got to get that guard off. Oh, there's bolts right there, too. So, there's one here, one here. Um, dash is going to have to come out. And they did give me this little trim piece. This just clip, clips in and out. I don't know if there's any. Yeah, there's a bolt under that trim piece. Um... There's going to be possibly a bolt. I mean, where the stereo is at, got to get the stereo out because there's definitely some bolts in that. Um, but all in all, it's not looking like it's going to be too hard of a job. It's just getting all the trims off of it so that this one will fit in. I want to wipe this one down because it's got really dirty and dusty in the garage here. And uh, I just want it to be clean or cleaner to throw in the car. So I'm going to blow it off with an air wand and, and wipe it down a little bit to make it look a little better. Also, this is an AC recovery system. I'm not real familiar with how to use these, um, but I am going to use it to pull a vacuum on the, can, on the AC on this so that we can charge it then. So, yeah, I'm not real familiar. Yeah, I see. And then I got a tank for doing this. I'm not I'm not real familiar with this stuff. I purchased this myself. Vivor sent me this. This is a scale to weigh your bottle. I, I used it by weighing my cats. It does work. <laughs> we'll get into this later in the episode, but I'll just show it to you. Nice little scale. Right here's the readout. Nice system. I need to get more familiar with this stuff and how to do it because... Uh, this is going to be a lifesaver coming to uh, rebuild vehicles, especially if uh, the condenser or has to be pulled and you have to recover the refrigerant. So, yeah. Not a must for a shop, but it is a good thing to have if you're rebuilding vehicles. I don't remember in the last episode we replaced seat belts, crash module, um, clock spring, all the airbags, all that. And then I put a couple of eliminators in that airbag over there. This is what this episode, why we're replacing it. Uh, all of this has to be replaced so that the dash can look 100%. Now, I, I, I'm thinking you could just remove the bag. Yep, it's bolted in there. You could just remove the bag and replace it and then patch it up. But since I have the whole dash, uh, it's just better to go this route. So... All right, let's get this thing cleaned up. All right, so I know some of the screws that I've already taken out in the previous episode were 
these very small Torx bits. So I know there's going to be more of those. Uh, I'm going to have to get my headlamp on. But from right here, I can see a Torx bit right there. Um, I got to drop that panel again. That's why I didn't really get in. I, I think I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the battery. Um, but we also have to remove a lot of the center console. So that means, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. I've never fully removed the set, just these side pieces is all I've removed. But you can see there's a, a 10 mil right there, um, probably to loosen this up. I don't know if these side panels are, looks like they're pretty well attached. Um, we gotta try to get this whole armrest and stuff off. I'm gonna clean some stuff up out of here. I, I got a lot of stuff in here. That way it gives me more room. I still don't have the seat bolted in yet. Really no use in doing it right now when you still gotta do this whole dash. So I don't know if the steering column needs to be dropped. Let me, hold a second. Let me go look at something on this. It's gonna be fine. Cause it's gonna be like right here. So yeah, there's nothing there that attaches it. It's nice to have one to look at. So I, I, I know what I'm getting into. So, fellas, I don't know that I am going to have to take the center console out of this thing. I think I've gotten every bolt on the driver's side at this moment. So, let me turn my headlight back on. So, there's a 10 millimeter up there. Then there's a Phillips right here. Everything's Phillips besides that 10. So, there's a Phillips here. Then there's four in the stereo itself there. And, and one right there, which... Those ones actually hold the dash in, so you have to get those out. And there's one right there, and there's one right here. And I think that was it for this side, and I think we're loose over here. I mean, it's probably still uh, clipped. Yeah, see this? Uh, you got to get it lifted up off of that, which I don't really know how that goes but we'll, we'll figure it out. I don't know that if this center console is going to get in the way or not. I'm not touching it right now. I, I noticed on the one I got, this must go up to that sensor up there. One's a sun sensor. One must be an antenna. So this was still attached on mine like this, uh, the, the other one I got. So you do have to take that off. Maybe there's a screw in here. This There's a little cover right here. I don't know. Maybe I'm missing something right here because this is loose no there's nothing in behind there but i might need that so we'll set that aside all right i don't know this mo this module back in here might need to be unbolted and dropped so that it can come out because it looks like it is going to get in the way and uh i just see two phillips on that so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take those two Phillips out so that'll drop because it's the whole way up into here and I don't know how hard this is gonna to be to lift off of here. There's duct work. This duct work I think stays in. Yeah, this stuff here. But I think the side pieces come out with it. Hmm. Anyways, we gotta get over to the passenger side. I'm gonna go ahead and take those screws out while I'm thinking about it, and then uh, we'll get over there. 
I'm gonna use a screwdriver. A lot of this I can, I can get with a gun, some of it I had to get with a screwdriver. So the reason this isn't lifting off, there's a Phillips right here. So I gotta get a small stubby Phillips to get in there because I can't get in there with my gun. Or you could put it on like a ratchet or whatever, but yeah, let me get that out. All right, so once you get that screw out, you're gonna pull the door trim loose over here and then you're gonna lift up on it and pull. And as you can see, it's loose and I'm glad I loosened this up down here because that's gonna give me the extra room that I'm probably gonna need to get that out. But as you can see the whole thing is moving even over here. So a couple more screws over here and we should be good. The, the A pillar is gonna have to come off and then I have everything else apart over here. So it's just a couple more screws and we should be in business. I want to just intimidate you just looking at this from doing this job because honestly I was expecting a lot worse. Worst thing is they have a clip right here that's on the back side. It's clipped in there. And then this is also clipped in back there. You can just pull on that. This one you can access to get it loose. Same deal on that side. They do the same thing. But th that really was not it, near as bad as I was expecting. I was thinking, you know, all of this had to come out and, and a lot more. But yeah, here we are. And uh, we're ready to throw the new one in. Um, I Still on the fence. Let me look at the speakers. Let me look at the speakers on this one. Okay, so that one's got a dent in it. I did want to try to change this vent cause, just because this one's chipped up on it. Um, so I'm going to try to switch that over i think i will switch my speakers over and i think i'm going to go ahead and use my sensors because i don't know if these ones work and i know mine do so i'm just going to go ahead and and do that so i know that i have good parts in it and i don't have to tear it apart what's an ant doing on my dad get out of here all right so i'm going to go ahead and swap some stuff over and um i'll get right back to you
So other than losing those two screws down there, which I don't think are going to make a difference for the climate control, because there's also a screw here and here. So, uh, let me straighten this camera up. So that'll hold it in. Plus it clips in down here. So I'm not worried about these two screws that fell down into the abyss. They're actually, I just found one. <laughs> okay. We'll put one in better than none. And honestly, I don't even think you need them in the first place. So as you can see, I showed you the airbag uh, plugins over there. Uh, all the bolts over there. It's kind of mimicked over here a little bit. There's you know, I got that one there, that one there, this one in the back of the dash there. I bolted this module back in tight, and uh, there's one up here and, and in the 10. So all that, plus I already had all that stuff plugged in. This I unclipped to get to uh, the stuff that I needed to get to. See if I can get this clip back in. There you go. Um... Yeah, we're making progress. Honestly, I if you would have asked me, I like I would have stayed away from dash airbags, but I don't know if they're all this easy. This one seemed pretty straightforward and it it was fairly easy. I'm, you know, I I was expecting a lot more extensive job, a lot more hardware holding these dashes in, but really it's not. It's just flimsy plastic over top of a steel frame. The rest of the pieces I'm going to clean up before I throw them back in, even though I'm going to clean this thing eventually. Uh, but I'm going to clean like the instrument cluster and, and some of the pieces here I got to put back in. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to look it's going to look pretty good. And then we'll uh, after we get this all back together, I'll hook the battery back up and we'll uh, start it up. I'm not going to hook a code reader up. We're just going to see if there's any lights on the dash. If there's no lights, we're good to go. All right, moment of truth, folks. Oh, the seat's not bolted in. I'm about to flip backwards. Um, gonna hook the battery back up, and uh, we're gonna see what codes comes up on the dash. Hopefully, none. I should add, uh, I, I got bored and I uh, detailed the engine bay. Looks much nicer. I didn't put uh, these back on because I did buy this. Uh, this 50 bucks online can't attach the cable because that's broken i believe everything's plugged in except for there's a light in the glove box and that's what that wire is hanging there so let's uh start her up now we got wipers on high beams on all right all except for my seatbelt light which i don't have my seatbelt on let me uh, go ahead and click that on there you go. All fixed in the airbag department and everything else, hopefully. Uh, this thing needs a serious clean, so before I bolt the seat back in, I want to move it and vacuum underneath it. Um, I, I did find a nice little treasure underneath the seat. The uh, fuse box door that was missing 
was under the seat. So I got that, thankfully. All right, so I plan on uh, finishing putting the interior back together of uh, what I can. And then uh, I also want to charge the AC. So while I'm in there, I'm not sweating my butt off. But first off, we're going to get this scale out. I'm going to weigh this tank and see what this tank weighs standard. Anyways, we can figure out, you know, well, we can zero it on here, but I want to know how much this tank weighs. So then next time we go to use it, you know, we know how much is in there and stuff, which there's not going to be anything in it because I'm not using it right now. I just bought it. So I had the complete setup. So the scale actually seems pretty nice quality. I forgot it's battery operated. Uh, it takes a, I think, yeah, a nine volt. Let's go ahead and turn it on. And uh, right now it's reading a little bit. Let's zero it out. There we go. Now, let's put this tank on and see how much this tank weighs. I'm going to write it on the tank then. Fourteen point nine pounds. Fourteen, yeah. So you can do pounds, ounces. So you can change it. It's two hundred and thirty-eight ounces or kilograms. We don't use those here in America. So I'm gonna put fourteen point nine pounds on here. I'm gonna write it on the tank so I know. So that's what it should weigh with nothing in it. All right, now we know. This tank, I bought it separate. This isn't a Vivor tank. They do have them, but they were out of stock. I believe that's why they didn't send me any. The difference between the high and the low on these is going to be gas or liquid. One of these picks up from the bottom. I believe it's the low. Uh, and the other one picks up from the top, which would be the gas. And I think that's the high. Uh, not... Don't, don't quote me on that. Anybody that's a professional, does ACs for a living, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Because there's a good possibility I might be. Alright, I better not do it. This is a 110 uh, pound. 110 pounder. If I step on that, we're going we're gonna to max her out. We're going to break her. <laughs> Here is the actual recovery system. Which I'm going to use to vacuum the system out. Also comes with a hookup line. That's just a two double female end uh, line, and then it also comes with an inline filter that you can put in and an extra O-ring gasket. I should have did more research on this thing because I really don't know how to use it. Thank God we're not using. I'm just going to use it to vacuum the system. It does have directions on here for uh, refrigerant pipes, exhaust. Uh, Recovery method, self-purge method, and liquid push pull method. So there's there's four different operating settings for this thing. All right, so now normally I would use my regular vacuum pump. I have my gauges hooked up. Right now I have these closed. It does have gauges on here for the high and low. We're just going to draw a vacuum on both of them. I'll be able to monitor it with my regular gauges up here. Um... I need to re-zero those things out. They're a little bit off again already. Um, you can zero these gauges out with these little holes in here and then get a screwdriver in there. As you can see. Yep. We need to zero those out. Alright, so what we are doing is exhausting the pipes. Okay. Um, what it tells you to do, skip the slow recovery. Recovery slow. We're going to go right to fast recovery once it gets to a negative one bar then we're going to switch it to purge which is setting three um i'm going to start it and then i'll open up i already have those open i'll open these up once it starts so let's go ahead and turn the unit on and then As you can see, it's drawn vacuum. Once it gets to a negative one, then we're going to switch it to purge. It's really not that loud either. Not too bad. 
Oh, it also does tell you to hook this filter up in line, flowing direction, so it's sucking air out of the system, so you can see there's a direction on, on there for that. And it looks like we've reached a negative one bar now. Now we're gonna switch it to three. Now I'm gonna let this go for a little bit, just to uh, draw a vacuum on the system, get rid of any contaminants or whatever that's in there. Then I'm gonna close it off and then I'm gonna charge the system. The directions show you how to hook everything up. Right now we're on this one, you can see it says open to air, so we're actually doing this correctly. Then you would hook the tank up. This is to purge the, the pipes itself, not the system, because you want to purge that air out. You don't want to put it in the tank. So we've been vacuuming this out for a while now. What I'm going to do, we're going to leave those open. We're going to close these. You see we're at a one bar, negative one bar. So I'm going to close these off. Now I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. We're going to wait and see if that's going to hold a one bar. So we're just going to let it be for, I don't know, half an hour. Normally you would wait like an hour. I'm going to wait for half an hour, see if it drops at all. If it doesn't drop, then we're going to add our R134A into it. Now normally on your hood it tells you how much. i got to find it here somewhere. So right there it says uh, 1.21 pounds is how much this system gets. We could do that by weighing our bottles on that and then seeing how much we get out of it. I never even thought of that. Let me bring the scale up here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and zero this out. So that's 0.95. So I don't know how much the bottle itself weighs, but we're gonna try to get 1.21 pounds or around that area into the system. Now, I don't have the correct fittings or lines to hook up through my gauges and do it, so I am gonna have to close off the valve, hook up just a regular AC line. I did have one with a gauge on it, but God knows where that went. I have this, which uh, you can shut the bottles on and off with this. But in order to keep vacuum, you got to close that valve and then take it off and then hook this one up. So we're going to do that. Okay, so the one is 1.95, one to 1.94. So what do we have together here? 1.9 all together. One's a little bit fuller than the other one. When I have problems... Uh, getting everything to get into the system, you have to start the vehicle up, you have to turn the AC on full blast, recirculate, all that stuff. Then you hook this up and, uh, you know, it'll charge, it'll take it, and every time the pump kicks on, it'll take a little bit more out. Sometimes it takes forever to do it, and heating up the bottom of the bottle will sometimes help that those gases get out. So, I'm going to total it up, try to get everything out of these that we can, and then, uh, Hopefully this system will be good. It's been a, about a good half an hour, 45 minutes of me drinking. Anyways, we're holding strong at one negative one bar. And release this valve. Now, we're going to hook this up, run this down in so it starts putting this into the system. And then we'll start the engine. Now we can watch the high pressure side while we do this. Now you can hear it charging the system with the pressure that's in the can. Now we're going to go in and start the vehicle and put the AC on high. On. Cold. Recirculate fan now it tells you as it goes to rotate the can from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock but as you can see we already 
are getting pressure in the system. You also notice while you're doing it, this can is going to get cold. And that'll actually show you how much fluid is left in here by where the cold mark is, the frost mark, because it'll go lower and lower the, where it's cold at. It'll be warm above that. I'm not doing 12 to 3 o'clock. I just kind of do a little jiggle like this. Still a good bit left in this thing. What our goal is when we get done, weigh both cans, we should have about 0.7 weight left. So that's, that's what we're trying for. Now, although we do have pressure in the system, we're still not getting enough to kick the AC. I don't hear the clutch kicking on it. So we're gonna let it run for a little bit. Hopefully it'll get enough pressure in it. Right now it's too low. Um, if it doesn't, then I'm gonna have to start heating up the bottom of the can to force stuff into it. What you don't wanna do is put the can upside down because you don't wanna run the liquids into the system. You want all gas to go in. As that can gets warmer from you heating it, it turns more of that liquid into vapor and pushes it into the system. Slowly our pressure is still going up, so I'm not gonna heat the can just yet. I wanna see if this thing will uh, work itself out. All right, so the one empty bottle itself is 0 0.2, 0 0.22. I just took that off, weighed it. We have one pound there. We want to be down to 0 0.7. So I'm going to get a little bit more in there, weigh it again. We get down to about 0 0.7, then we're right around the correct amount that needs to be in this. 0.9, still got a ways to go. I'm also not used to this. You cannot hear the clutch, the the compressor clutch. You can't hear it kick on. I don't hear it kicking on and off at all, but I can tell you right now, it's dang cold in there, because look at this. So it is working. Oh my God, it's working. It feels great. So I'm gonna keep going, because it still needs a little bit more, but we're gonna get this finished and then I can get the interior in. I'm gonna stop right there because it's supposed to be 1.21 and I have 1.9 to start out with. Now I have 0.6, so, well, 0.8. So that gives me 1.21, the exact amount that needs to be in this. So now I can open this valve, open this to vent it. And then uh, take this off. Cap these. Now, normally if you have a leak in the system, it's gonna be these Schrader valves. In fact, I'm gonna check them real quick, just to be sure. Because although it showed I had no leaks, I was also hooked up to those Schrader valves. So if the Schrader, Schrader valves were leaking, they weren't gonna show up on a gauge. That one seems tight. And that one's they're both pretty tight it doesn't mean they there's also o-rings in these so make sure your caps are on tight because then if, if the schrader valve does leak at least your cap is going to help seal that pressure in and if you want to get your hand look at this look at this if you want to get your hands on that vivor scale and recovery system there's going to be a link in the description oh my goodness oh it's like 90 degrees out in here it's glorious <sighs> i'm gonna shut it off though so if you want to get that vivo recovery system they do sell the recovery tanks they were currently out of stock i don't know if it's back in stock now but to have that in your garage if you're rebuilding vehicles is a very nice tool to have so There'll be a link in the description. If they give me a discount code, I'll 
include a discount code down below. If they don't, it won't be there. And we have more Vivor products to come. Not in this video. Next video. Uh, they sent me a... I guess I have two different people from Vivor reaching out to me. Because one sends me something and another one sends me something. I'm fine with it. Send me all you got. Uh, this is a wall mount storage system for like bolts and stuff. And, and also you can put tools and all kinds of goodies. So that'll be a next video. And now I have to take a break because my wife wants to go for a walk. So she's making me go for a walk with her. Come on! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? He's like, how do I get out? <laughs> are you Jorby boy? Oh, kisses to your brother. Oh, you bite your <laughs> No more kisses. Bite ear. He bite the ear. Back. We're back. I'm dying. She's fine. Look at me. <laughs> I was sweating like stripper on nickel night. All right, now back from my wall. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this interior, clean it and everything, and then I'm gonna show you guys what the interior of this thing looks like when I'm done with it. Should be pretty impressive, I think. Alright, I can't video too much more because I keep sweating in the car and I don't want to get sweat in it. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Sweating my butt off. It's going to be the story of my summer. So if you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing. Hit that dislike button if your mom's got to split down her bag hole. And we'll see you on the next episode of Unwrapped. What? No! <laughs> Hi -ya! It's looking weird out here. Like it's like gonna storm or something? I don't know. It's like orange. Man, Z's looking. Mmm! So good. Oh, Marana looks decent. Evan, oh, the Honda. Oh. Where's my kitties? Where's... Hi, Stella. Hi, Stella. Oh, he's stupid and rolling. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's stupid. Oh, why you got your back legs all stretched out like that? What? What? Hanging out in the dark over here. Hi, Sheldon. Can I pet you? Can I pet you? You gotta sniff me first. Now I can pet you. Love. On my yeah, well, now he's out here. And he let me get like three pets in before he walked away. You're mean. Hey, this has been Sully's spot. <laughs> what are you doing under there? Do you want to come out and say hi? Hi. He's like, nope, I just want to lay under this bed. Alright, meanie. <laughs>